Welcome you two to the channel, the SF channel. I'm Lucy Leak. You don't want to try out your engine, have it turned into dry bones. So Dana and I were record shopping in Seattle and what's that smell? It smells like coolant. Yeah, there was some traffic. It was like a Friday. Sun was out mid 70s here in the Seattle area. Last day of summer smelling coolant. Now a coolant leak left unchecked can do catastrophic damage. That's why we have this gauge on the dash. It should stay at operating temperature. It starts getting over that halfway point and you may have a coolant leak. And you should never ever drive your car around too much when it's hot in that red zone area. Because this is how you do engine damage, all right? This is how you blow a head gasket, warp a head. There's a number of horrible things that can happen when you drive your car when it's overheating, all right? Very extremely bad for your engine. This is why roadside assistance is, is important in your insurance policy. Get that, it's worth it. If you're overheating, pull over and park it. The best way to look for a coolant leak is underneath. If you see coolant dripping, or if you see it all over the bottom of your engine, uh, you have a coolant leak. In this case, didn't see it dripping from the front. In this case, it was coming from the heater hoses. To be more specific, it was this junction between these three hoses here that uh, gave me the problem. Stay tuned in this video for what would the shop guy say about all this? Oh, and while you're here, you might as well hit the like button, all right? It's the human thing that helps us out a lot. Just the like button, it's right there. It'll give you extra motivation to, to tackle troubles in your life such as these, all right? If you hit the like button. And if you're new, subscribe. You don't wanna do that. Yep. This is where I, uh, you should watch this video all the way through. Um, because I ran into some snags. This is a DIY solution, all right? This is not something approved by your ASC certified mechanic, by the way. But if you're short on funds, it'll get you out of a jam. <laughs> the uh, reservoir off, we have two 10 millimeter nuts hold it on and then this is my uh from the heater core right there and that hose feels okay it's a little it's a little bit bulgy you know this one yeah but he isn't broken this is still in one solid piece so that's good news this by the way is a awesome tool for removing those springy hose clamps love this thing makes quick work of hose clamps you can also use a vice grip but it's significantly harder all right now one of the things i wanted to focus on and why i believe this is leaking is not just that these look, you know, a little rusty and worn, but over time, you can see there's some bulging right there. These, you know, you can get leaks right in this area from where the clamp is attached to the hose. Whether it's one of these or one of these, you know, that there's the soft point here over time. Now, I could replace this hose, which is like, 40 50 bucks but what i'm going to do is show you a little trick that has helped me get down the road <laughs> more than once that they do make these hoses a little longer than they need to be for a reason and uh, i'll show you why yeah to demonstrate the vice grip method uh you can just do it this way but this is much harder than this device which keeps the thing open for you so does the vice grip but it's this is easier to manage and work with uh when you're in tight places like that all right now you can get bulk heater hose to replace this but you know for the sake of this video getting you down the road maybe saving you some money 
I'll show you what I'm what I'm doing here. So yes, here's the uh, my hack for you is just simply a razor knife, and you take this part that you know is fluffy, <laughs> right? Perforated, you could say, and possibly have the hose clamp cut into it. This is usually how hoses fail, by the way, is the hose clamp over time, it gets, you know, the ends get bulged up and swollen and the hose clamp cuts into it and it causes a leak. That's usually what happens. That's what's happened here. So yeah, I'm gonna go the uh, poor man's way of doing this and uh, call it good for a while, see what happens. So there's a shortage of these. That's another COVID thing, I guess. Uh, so I had to get these. These are actually marine clamps. The good thing about these, and the Master Tech, Tony was telling me about this, is that they give even uh, pressure around the hose circumference, right? That's what's good about uh, these kind of spring clamps. But they do get old and, you know, rusty and start to lose their uh, strength over time. Um, these these are marine, so I got these from Napa, and this is like a marine application, and the reason for that is the screws sometimes will rust out. Um, these are stainless steel, and if you live in the rust belt, you're going to get salt and stuff blowing up in there. Um, it's good to spend a little extra on these marine application. Marine! <laughs> shouldn't be marine all right don't have my tripod so cutting this one off and as you can see it's just just beyond the where the clamp went down on it there another tip for you eight millimeter socket is a lot easier to work on on these hose clamps than a screwdriver all right uh, oh, no. and yeah tightening it up broke right off okay so tightening it down this happened so this thing brittle or is there some kind of torque spec i need to look up for this i don't think so it's just this is old and it probably got brittle my wife's got the van my son's honda is getting a muffler at the shop so i took the bicycle over six miles trying to track down more of these but I did get one of these, and yes, I didn't, they didn't have any of these, so carefully putting on the uh, hose clamps. And some of you may be like, why didn't you change out that one back there, Russ? Because I don't know uh, the, the structural integrity of the heater core, to be honest with you. Is it made of metal? Like, I would hope so, but if it's not, you know, don't fix what ain't broke. It's not leaking back there, it's leaking here. So I'm gonna take care of that for now. Even pressure feels about right. This has this nice nipple thing on it. So you can actually feel under here that the hose clamp is under it on that side too. Nice and snug, nice. All right, and there it is. And again, tightened up to where I can feel that nipple underneath. Um, and then I got this one. I'm going to use this clamp up here because, again, we got uh, old components. So this bottle didn't leak. should be fine. But the spring clamp is way better for this stuff because it gives even pressure to the plastics. All right. Again, did I mention what an awesome device this thing is? I mean, so many swear words did not need to be said <laughs> because I can just use this it's it's a beautiful thing all right there it is installed with the hose clamps screw on hose clamps and now we're going to fill it with fluid if i empty one of these i fill it halfway up with water all right the reason for that is i buy concentrate because when you buy half and half or 50 50 they put water in it see i mean you can do that yourself so then you have double for maybe five like they're gonna charge you an extra five even ten bucks for like you're losing money 
<laughs> every time you don't buy concentrate is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna fill this to the full, right? Cause it's half got halfway water in it. And then I fill this full with water and then we have two gallons of coolant dex cool yes all right people and because your g6 does not have a or your car whatever you're doing this with doesn't have a radiator cap the way you put fluid in is is through here okay so that means you're going to need one of these and it comes with all these nice nifty adapters and this one is the one we need right here all right put that on there like that put this on here like this and I'll put the beauty cover back on might as well all right so i'm gonna start pouring coolant in it and then i'm gonna get it on level ground because it's not level here where it's sitting all right got my half and half mixture here and then we're gonna at least start it out while it's sitting here and just add some coolant which looks like it's going directly into the top of the heater core first oh yeah you can hear some air escaping also part of why i do this outside here is on the grass is so that the coolant goes into the grass and the kitties don't lick it up because they'll die. So yes, the heater is on. Got the climate control cranked all the way to 90. And we let it sit, warm up as that coolant uh, gets drank down into the system. The reason it's important to have one of these is not just for the easier to pour coolant in it, but it also is bubbling. So the bubbles come up, you can see the bubbles as it soaks down, drinks down, because you're you gotta let all the bubbles out of here too. Towards the end of this video, the shop guy back there <laughs> wanted me to tell you what uh, the shop will say about something like this, what, what a shop will do. And yeah, they're not gonna encourage you to cut off the hoses like I did here. So yes, the shop will more than likely want you to do a flush. They'll try and sell you a flush, flush out the whole system. You probably need hoses, all right? I'm me, okay? I've been working on cars for 30 years. If something goes wrong with this, I'll just get in there and fix it. Um, at the shop, they're gonna encourage you to get new heater hoses. And the reason for that is because they don't want you to have to come in and spend a bunch of money again on labor to fix this problem. So odds are they're gonna probably sell you a new, they're trying to sell you a new reservoir maybe. This one's fine, like, but I thought the T was fine too, right? The PVC T and that broke apart on me. So, but I found out that it didn't work and I replaced it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that disclaimer out just because the shop guy back there tells you um, that you need hoses, that you need hoses, right? Like these hoses were perforated, they're, they're puffy, and and it would have been better to replace the hoses, but just didn't want to do that right now. Let's see how long it'll go like this, because odds are it'll run another 50,000 miles. And if you want a more detailed video on how to use this thing, I, I'll put a link in the description. But there you go, it's, uh, it's got coolant in it, and I caught it early, so not much leaked out thanks for watching like subscribe you know the drill appreciate you if this helped in any way shape or form please in the comments section uh, it helps my self-esteem it does Don't forget to subscribe and why not watch another video? Stick around!